Hello! Welcome once again to Northworthy Sagas and Stories. I am your host, Tear Kim. Please smash the like button and feel free to leave a comment. Also, don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Now, this story concerns one of the ancient kings of Sweden, whose name was Gilfi. In fact, his name means wave. And his meeting, well, with someone who he assumed was one of the most inconsequential members of his kingdom, who turned out to be something far more important. For this is also the story of the goddess called Gaphion, whose name means giver. One morning, King Gilfi of Sweden awoke in the bed of a peasant girl. He opened his eyes, looked around her small, simple, humble home as the sunlight streamed in through the doorway. He got up, he got dressed, he ate and was preparing himself to leave for his hall off in Uppsala. And the girl said to him, My Lord King, I'm glad that you've enjoyed my hospitality and also the evening's entertainment that I was only too glad to provide for you. And she left these words hanging in the air for a moment until the king suddenly realized what she was trying to say. He scrabbled inside his pouch. He fished out a small silver ring, handed it to her. Here, he said, this will recompense you for all the hospitality I received last night. Is that all I'm worth, she said? A small silver band? Really? Huh. If I'd have known this was all you thought of me, I might have thought twice before uh, welcoming you into my home. And so now the, thing, uh, the king thought, and he said, Very well, I'll give you a plough gate of land. As much land as can be ploughed with the use of four oxen in one day and one night. And the girl agreed to this offer. And she said that in a little over nine months' time she would return to claim the gift that the king was giving. And they parted company. The king went back to Uppsala. And as for the peasant girl, she left the house and she walked away. And as she did so, her whole aspect changed. Her clothes became finer, heavily embroidered with silk. Her hair seemed to be made of flowing gold. A huge necklace hung about her neck catching the fiery rays of the sun itself. And where she walked, green shoots and flowers sprouted up from the ground. And she went off to her chariot, pulled into the sky by two great cats. And it sped away, away from the middle earth of mortal people over the wide ocean encircling the world until at last it came to the land of the giants and there she spent a passionate evening with a handsome young giant and true to her word nine months later she returned bearing four strong sons giant children in the shape of colossal oxen, huge bulls whose horns 
were so tall, they seemed ready to scratch the sky itself. And she arrived in the land of Sweden. At sunrise, she came from the east with the rising sun. And she harnessed the oxen to the plough and set to work. The ploughshare dug deep into the earth, going all the way through until it bit into the bedrock itself. And it began to carve out a huge tract of land from the Swedish kingdom. The oxen strained and heaved. Clouds of steam rose from their flanks. And as the day drew to an end and night fell, the job was half completed. And so the team of oxen carried on urged on by their mistress. And now that it was night time, wreathed in steam as they were, all that could be seen of their heads were their eyes, gleaming upon their foreheads like eight bright stars. And by the following morning, as the sun was just starting to come up again. The job was finished. The goddess, she took the land away, placed it in the sound of water between Denmark and Sweden. And so it became Zeeland. And this is why the outline of the island of Zeeland corresponds to the shape of Lake Malar in Sweden. But that's what it became when the great hole left by the plough filled with water. And it was there that the goddess Gafayan settled. Holy altars were raised to her at Lera. And when the gods sent a boy child magically to rule over the Danes, his name was Skild, they became married. And as for Gilfi, the king, his name means wave, he never forgot this experience. And it led him on to seek out the land of the gods, to question them, to learn their wisdom about the whole of the nine worlds. But for now, that's the end of this story. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, please click on the notification bell. Thank you.